July 17th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, 2 Corinthians chapter 12 from the New Testament. It is necessary to go on boasting. Though it is not profitable, I will go on divisions and revelations from the Lord. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know, God knows, was caught up to the third heaven. And I know that this man, whether in the body or apart from the body, I do not know, God knows, was caught up into paradise and heard things too sacred to be put into words, things that a person is not permitted to speak. On behalf of such an individual, I will boast, but on my own behalf, I will not boast, except about my weaknesses. For even if I wish to boast, I will not be a fool, for I would be telling the truth, but I refrain from this, so that no one may regard me beyond what he sees in me or what he hears from me, even because of the extraordinary character of the revelations. Therefore, so that I would not become arrogant, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan, to trouble me, so that I would not become arrogant. I asked the Lord three times about this, that it would depart from me. But he said to me, My grace is enough for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. So then, I will boast most gladly about my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may reside in me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, with insults, with troubles, with persecutions and difficulties for the sake of Christ. For whenever I am weak, then I am strong. I have become a fool. You yourselves force me to do it, for I should have been commended by you. For I lack nothing in comparison to those super apostles, even though I am nothing. Indeed, the signs of an apostle were performed among you with great perseverance by signs and wonders and powerful deeds. For how were you treated worse than the other churches, except that I myself was not a burden to you? Forgive me this injustice. Look, for the third time I am ready to come to you, and I will not be a burden to you, because I do not want your possessions, but you. For children should not have to save up for their parents, but parents for their children. Now I will most gladly spend and be spent for your lives. If I love you more, am I to be loved less? But be that as it may, I have not burdened you. Yet, because I was a crafty person, I took you in by deceit. I have not taken advantage of you through anyone I have sent to you, have I? I urged Titus to visit you, and I sent our brother along with him. Titus did not take advantage of you, did he? Did we not conduct ourselves in the same spirit? Did we not behave in the same way? Have you been thinking all this time that we have been defending ourselves to you? We are speaking in Christ before God, and everything we do, dear friends, is to build you up. For I am afraid that somehow when I come, I will not find you what I wish, and you will find me not what you wish. I am afraid that somehow there may be quarreling, jealousy, intense anger, selfish ambition, slander, gossip, arrogance, and disorder. I am afraid that when I come again, my God may humiliate me before you, and I will grieve for many of those who previously sinned and have not repented of the impurity sexual immorality and licentiousness that they have practiced. God, I thank you for my weaknesses. Paul talks about this a lot. This imperfect person that I am who chooses sin way more than I should. And yet it's so easy to see who you are in my life and how you're working in my life and what you have done to my life and how you've changed my heart. God, where I came from before you was so devastating. At the time, I didn't think it was, but I was destroying not only my entire world, but more importantly, who I was and that value of who I was. And then coming into your light and realizing that I had value because of how much you loved me, because you made me, because you had given me the heart that I had, was astounding. So much so that it's even hard to this day to accept that. 
I understand that you love me. I don't understand how much you love me, nor do I think I ever could. But all of my weaknesses are filled up by you. And people get a chance to look at my life and see you. And to me, that is probably one of the most humbling things that you've given me, that you want to use someone like me to glorify you and to tell others about you. And I continue to be baffled at that as you show me miracle after miracle after miracle of you working in people's lives through my weaknesses. I don't quite understand all of it. But I sure know that what Paul says is true. God, your grace is enough for me. I don't have to be perfect. I can never be perfect. I can never be like you. But with you, everything that I am can be exactly what you need it to be while I'm here on earth. That if I seek your will and the path that you have for me, everything that you want to have happen in my life will happen and on a grander scale than what I could ever imagine. Just tonight I had posted on Facebook an image that says, I am the daughter of a king who is not moved by the world, for my God is with me and goes before me. I do not fear because I am his. God, there's so much power in those words that I am yours. There's so many times I feel like I'm, co I'm a complete mess and why would anybody listen to me, much less listen to anything I have to say about you, God? But you take all my oddness and uniqueness and choices of who I am and you combine that with who you made me to be for you as your daughter and you make everything right. Your grace makes everything right in my world. And from that, I am allowed to have this incredible life with you, this incredible relationship with you. And I know there's more times than not that I get it wrong. But again, your grace and your mercy and your forgiveness steps in and allows me to be surrounded once again by your love. God, we don't have to be anything but yours. And you will take these amazing hearts that you made for us and you will make them what you need them to be if we allow you into our hearts. So God, just come into our hearts, come into our lives. We lay everything at your feet. Everything that we think we want is so little compared to what you have offered us, what you want to give us, what you want us to be. We want to keep choosing our weaknesses instead of this amazing world and opportunity that you have for us. God, today, let us choose you. Let us choose you in everything that we do, in every action, in every thought, in every deed that we do. God, allow my heart to please you. Allow my weakness to be used by you. In your son's name, I pray. Amen.